Hello, my name's Marty and today I should be doing another Matchbox makeover. This time it's the number 35B, the Snow Track Tractor. This model came out in 1964. This model was released in at least three different versions. The original version had the word snow track cast into the metal on the side. Later versions had a sticker that said snow track or no sticker at all. Here's a close up of the model prior to restoration. There's no doors on the side of this model. As can be seen it's been well played with. The tracks are missing and it's been painted this weird desert camouflage pattern. Here you can see the original colour, it's maroon. These models also came out in a red. It's got a sturdy hook on the back there, which not surprisingly has remained intact. There's some incredible detail on this model. For example, look at the casting on the radiator grill. As usual, I'm going to drill and tap a small hole in the rivet post. This way, I can use a small screw to reassemble the model after restoration. Here is the tap that I should be using to cut the screw threads to accept the screw. Here's a small 2mm domed head Allen screw that I should be using. I will be drilling the 1.5mm screw hole before removing the rivet head. This way I will have a centre pilot hole to guide me when I am drilling off the rivet head. I'm using aluminium vice clamps in my vice so I don't damage the model. Before drilling I use a small piece of masking tape around the drill to show me the depth that I need to go. That way there is no risk of me drilling too deep. After removing the head of the rivet, the base simply falls away. Now it's time to cut the screw thread. I'm using a small amount of engine oil here as a lubricant for the tap. By moving the tap backwards and forwards, I'm cutting a thread inside of the hole. Now it's time for a test fit of the screw to make sure it fits. I'm happy with that. A lot of the earlier Matchbox models riveted their windscreens in. This one however is just sitting in the body. 
All it needs is a little persuasion and it falls out. There's some paint on this windscreen that I'm going to have to remove. For the body and base I shall be using paint stripper to remove the paint. So before paint stripping the base I'm going to mask off the wheels so they don't get damaged by the paint stripper. I got some mail today. It is some decals and tracks that I ordered for this model some weeks ago. Here is a close-up of the water slide transfers. Unfortunately, the font does not appear to exactly match the original. However, I have no other option but to use these transfers. Here is an early test fit of the tracks, and they seem to fit well. Here I'm comparing the colour of the original model to another model that I've recently restored, and the colours look extremely similar. To make things easy, I'm going to use the same colour to paint the snow track. The masking of the wheels is quite time consuming, so I've sped this bit up. I use a tried and tested product called Polystripper. I find it works on all paints and is very fast. I recommend using rubber gloves if using any form of paint stripper as they can burn if they get on the skin. Today my pet cat Morty came to see what was going on. I bet he can't wait to see the finished product. So now it's back to the paint stripping, this time the base. I'm not going to undercoat the base when I repaint it because I'm going to repaint it silver. And if I undercoat it, it will probably just dull it down a bit. Now here I am removing the paint after applying the paint stripper. I'm using my wife's toothbrush and a bath of warm water.
that's the body done, now it's time for the chassis. I try to be very careful when doing this so that I don't mark or score the casting. Here you can see me removing some remnants of paint that were left behind after the paint stripping. I'm using a scriber and some emery paper. Whilst doing this I'm being very careful not to mark, scratch or damage the original casting with the scriber. So here's the body and the chassis when I've finished with them. Now we can have a look at some details on this casting. Here's that radiator grill I was talking about in the beginning. It's a very fine piece of detailing. Underneath at the front can be seen some reinforcement. I guess this was on the real snow track in case they hit a hidden boulder while scooting across the snow. Here's a general view of the underside. I'll be painting this silver soon, including the axles. Look at the detail in the suspension unit. You've got pivot pins, shock absorbers, and inverted leaf springs, all bolted onto heavy duty mounting blocks. And here at the back, a close-up of that heavy-duty hook I mentioned in the beginning. This thing was built like a tank. Let's now look at some detail on the body. For example, on both sides above the tracks, there is a flat friction strip probably for the passengers or driver to stand on to see over the horizon. There's a couple of grills on the bonnet. And on the back there's all sorts of stuff. There's a door handle, rear lights. This here I wasn't too sure what it was at first, all that. But uh, I've identified what that is. It's a fuel filler cap, as seen in this picture. So quite a detailed little model. Next up, it's painting time. I'm not going to undercoat the base, but I am going to undercoat the body. To do this, I'm going to use British Paints Spray Easy Paint and Prime. It's the very first primer I used and I had such fantastic results that I've continued to use it ever since. You don't want to put too much of this stuff on because it can conceal the details and that's one of the things we want to preserve. So here's the body and the base ready for painting. To paint the model I use my airbrush and a small compressor. I always dilute my paints with a small amount of thinners. This way they flow through the spray gun a little bit easier. My spray booth is made out of an old polystyrene box. It has a hole in the roof with a lamp shining through and a hole in the side so I can film the action.
Okay, that's the red done. Now it's time for the silver. Here you can see me rotating the axles as I spray them to ensure even coverage. So far so good, I'm really happy with the paint job. Now it's time to remove the screw that I glued onto the model so I'd have something to hold whilst I painted it. Some of the wheels have got a small amount of silver overspray on them, so I'm going to remove the masking tape and paint them gloss black so they look brand new. For this I'm using Tamiya Gloss Black, diluted with a few drops of thinners. The thinners makes the paint flow around the wheel and makes painting them easier. To mix my paint and thinners I use wooden coffee stirrers that I buy in bulk from a local hardware shop. I use the minimum amount of paint on the brush and I repeat until I'm happy with the result. What I just did there was I raised the end of the axle so I can get full paint coverage of the wheel underneath the axle head. Now I turn my attention to the transparency. When the previous owner painted this in its camouflage scheme, he splashed some paint on the windows, so I'm going to remove that now. In the past I've used a razor blade, but some of my subscribers have recommended using brake fluid. I'll be very surprised if it works, but I'm going to give it a go. What I did last night was I painted a small amount of matching paint onto the top of the transparency. Now I'm going to try and remove it using a cotton bud dipped in brake fluid. If it ruins the plastic it won't matter because it won't be seen when it's reassembled. So I'm doing this as kind of a, a test before I do the sides of the screen. To my great surprise, it seems that this technique actually works, and it works well. I'm now going to go on and clean the rest of the transparency using some more brake fluid and cotton buds. Thanks to my subscribers, I've now learned a new technique. Afterwards I give it a buff with a soft cloth. And here I show you in the light that there is absolutely no damage whatsoever to the plastic. Quite amazing. Here is a close up shot of the finished windscreen. As you can see it came up pretty good. Now that the black paint on the wheels is dry, I'm touching up the ends of the axles with some Tamiya silver paint. To do this I'm using the smallest brush in my set.
Here's a close-up of what the axle ends look like when they've been painted. Here's an overhead view of all the parts ready for reassembly. But before reassembly, I need to apply the water slide transfers. I've prepared a couple of thin blocks of wood. One to balance the side of the truck on so it sits vertically, and the other one just to brace it, stop it falling over. Here I'm trimming the transfers. I shall be putting them in the water one at a time. Here I'm doing a test fit just to see if it's cut to the right size. Before applying the transfer, it's a good idea to dampen the area first with a small amount of water. This way, when you put the transfer on, you have time to slide it into position. It doesn't take too long and the transfer will separate from the backing sheet. Here I'm just trying to coax it off. Now I'm placing it into position and I'm using a blunt cocktail stick just to hold it in place whilst I remove the backing sheet. It's extremely fiddly because I'm basically working inside a three-sided box. Not everything goes to plan. Here the transfer has twisted itself round and is sitting incorrectly. So I'm attempting to rectify that using the toothpick. Thankfully I succeeded. Now I'm just doing some very minor adjustments to get it exactly in the center. When I'm happy with it, I use a little bit of tissue paper to absorb the excess water. Usually that's all you need, but here, you just saw it, it started to move out of position again. So after a little bit of stuffing around, I'm happy with how it is. Now I'm going to try out this new product called Mr. Mart Softer and you just apply this solution to the transfer. It's supposed to make it shrink and conform to the edges and curves of the model for a professional finish. So having done that one, I'll now do the second one. This one went on a little bit easier. So now that the decals are fully dried, I'm now reassembling the model. First of all, I put the windscreen in. Then the base. There's a small tab on the back of the base that engages with the slot at the rear of the cabin. Now my colour matched Allen screw is going in to hold it all together. Here's a shot of the underside to show you what the screw looks like. It very closely resembles an original rivet. And now, once again, the moment that we've all been waiting for, the final reveal.
thank you for watching another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. So this thing here, I'm going to snap this off. Oh, f that's that. I'm going to snap this off. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to snap this off. Ow. That's stuck on there pretty good. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to be painting this. First of all, I'll snap this off like this. Easy.